Hi everyone, a nice easy one for you today. Just using my sat square just to draw the horizon line in, keep it nice and straight. Um, I'm using Bockingford cold press paper. Um, it's going to be a very simple tree landscape, um, pencil and wash technique. Um, just using an HB pencil to draw the horizon line in. Now I've gone over to a 2B pencil just to start drawing in a few trees. I've been struggling for ideas uh, and inspiration just lately. I haven't had a clue what to draw or paint. Um, so I went out for a walk the other day and um, it was a nice sort of sunny afternoon and the sun was just going down at the back of the trees. Um, unfortunately I didn't have my camera so I couldn't take a photo but I thought I'd try and do a painting of it from memory and see what happens. See if I can sort of capture, capture the uh, atmosphere um, of the day. The painting only took me um, 30 foot, 35 minutes I think from start to finish. Um, so it's very very quick by my standards usually I take hours on these these things so it really is just a quick simple sketch um, beginners can do this one if you if you are painting along at home this will be very easy for beginners there's no complicated um, perspective or buildings or anything like that um, so it's nice and simple as you can see I'm using the pencil on the side there um, and it sort of brings out the grain and the texture of the paper and it can give some nice effects for foliage and hedgerows and things like that just drawing a few more distant trees there with the HB pencil using the HB pencil for the trees that are further away in the distance and the 2B pencil for the trees which are closer Like I say, I'm sort of making this up as I go along, just trying to remember um, roughly, you know, how the landscape was. It's not going to be exact, but um, hopefully it'll be near enough. Just using the 2B pencil just to darken up um, that foreground hedge. As you can see, I'm using the pencil again on the side there just to um, get some texture for foliage and stuff like that. It's very quick and very easy to do. starting with the trees on the left hand side I was going to make um, the tree that I'm drawing now the sort of focal point um, but after I drew it I didn't like the look of it so I kind of made it a little bit shorter I rubbed out the base of the tree and decided to use the, the two trees on the right hand side uh, as the main focal point although it's not much of a focal point it's more of a sort of atmosphere sketch than anything else just to try and capture the moment um, there will be a pathway going through the middle I could have put two figures or a figure or something along there just to add more interest but uh, I decided just to keep it really simple today Again, I'm just using the HB pencil there just for the 
trees that are set further back. And I'm using side of the HP pencil um, just along the horizon line there just to suggest distant trees and bushes and things like that way off into the distance. And then with a blending stump I'm just going over the, the tops of the tree canopies um, it gives a nice sort of natural look um, to the tops of the trees. I mean obviously you can't paint the thousands and thousands of little twigs and stuff that are there so um, just suggesting them with a um, little bit of graphite smeared over the canopy can give a nice effect. Just generally softening off as well some of the hedgerows there and um, the distant trees as well with a blending stump. You don't actually have to do that. Um, you can sort of keep it, um, you know, as you've drawn it. You don't have to sort of blend it in at all. But I just thought I'd try and just soften it off just a little bit. Um, it'll still th still sh show through quite nicely um, under the watercolour washes. Um, but it just won't be quite so detailed. Just putting in the final um, few trees there, just in the distance. And that really is um, as complicated as it gets. I mean that's the main drawing done now, that's the complicated stuff out of the way. Well I say complicated stuff, it wasn't complicated at all really was it? It was you know, nice and simple. Um, now I'm just marking out a pathway um, and using the side of the HP pencil just to sort of suggest um, the, the grass, the shadows in the grass. You can see that I'm keeping the lines um, following you know the, the perspective and the direction of the picture and you can see that I'm sort of increasing the size of them as I come forward into the picture um, and they're sort of smaller as they go off into the distance but you can kind of see the obvious lines there the obvious perspective lines um, but we'll be glazing over that with watercolour anyway but they, should, they will still show through um, and it'll all add to the you know the overall effects um, of the direction and the perspective in the grass and everything. It sounds funny doesn't it sort of drawing grass with perspective but um, it's sort of hard to explain you know if this was a ploughed field with lines in it there would be you know a perspective there the lines would get smaller as they go away from you um, and you can kind of create that just a little bit even though it's kind of rough overgrown grass it will help the, the picture just to give it a little bit of um, perspective there in the grass instead of just kind of scribbling just here there and everywhere it might end up looking a real mess so um, just just kind of be mindful of that when you're doing the grass although it is literally just scribbling with the side of the pencil you are scribbling following a perspective I'm just kind of softening it off a little bit there with the uh, blending stump as well Just a little bit of tidying up with the eraser and it's just about done. Let's get rid of all the bits. And that's pretty much it really, that's all there is to it. So now I'm wetting um, the paper with clean water, I'm wetting it all over. I 
trying to be nice and soft as well so I don't um, smudge the graphite <clears throat> And that's just neat yellow ochre um, along the horizon there. And I strengthened it up there along the base of the horizon because the sun was going down at the back of those trees and there was that nice sort of orange colour in the sky. In the foreground I'm using yellow ochre as well but I'm leaving it fairly patchy, you know, on purpose just to create a bit of uh, rough texture in the grass and a bit of light hitting the path and everything. So it just doesn't look too flat. And just sort of feathering out the yellow ochre into the middle part of the sky there. Now I'm using, <coughs> excuse me. Now I'm using a mix of um, cobalt blue. It's just a flat wash. Um, I'll just kind of blend that into the yellow ochre there near the horizon. And then before it dries, I use um, a clean damp brush, and I just sort of tease out some of the colour to create a few soft clouds in the sky you can use a tissue for that um, but I, I like to use a brush because um, the paper still stays wet and I can drop a few um, shadows into the clouds and they'll sort of diffuse in there um, and look nice and soft but if you do it with a tissue you, obviously the, the paper is going to be fairly dry and the paint won't uh, diffuse into it if you put any paint there so that's why I like to use that method cleaning up the yellow ochre from the distant field um, and now I'm using a mix of um, cobalt blue and cadmium red keeping it on the bluer side um, I'm just dropping it in to suggest the distant trees while the paper is still wet obviously so I get a nice soft edge using a bit of that same colour for the distant tree canopies as well. And while that's still wet, before it all completely dries out, um, I'm just going to drop in a few little bits of um, cobalt blue, just to add a little bit of variation here and there. And then that darker colour that's going in, that's just the cloud shadow. I just thought I'd just drop a little bit of that in as well. Why not? <laughs> right, okay, so I'll let all that dry. And now for the hedge, I'm using a mix of um, raw umber with a little bit of cobalt blue in there, just to darken it off a little bit. Um, and I'm using the side of the brush, like a dry brush technique, sort of hit and miss on the paper so I get some of the texture of the grain showing through. I can add, you know, a little bit of sparkle um, to the painting, sort of add natural highlights when you get that um, white grain of the paper coming through. Now I'm using Hooker's Green and Yellow Ochre just to um, glaze over those bushes and shrubs and things like that. And just dropping a little bit of that same mix here and there just in the hedgerow as well just to add a little bit more variation. Just dropping a little bit of lemon yellow on there as well just to suggest a little bit of light catching it now 
Now for the grass, I'm going to use cobalt blue and burnt umber. Um, it's a light wash, a watery wash. And I'm just using the brush again on the side, dry brush technique, just dragging it over the grain of the paper, um, following those perspective lines again of the pencil marks, just to add a bit more depth to the shadows in the grass. Don't worry if this looks a little bit too um, hard edged or anything like that because we are going to glaze over this in a moment when it's dry. Just adding a little bit of um, darker paint there just to define the, the path and the grass verges. And I think that was the hedge colour I used there, but just a little bit more diluted. Now for the path in the foreground there, I used um, the same colours that I used for the hedge, raw umber and cobalt blue. Um, I just dropped a little bit of colour here and there in the foreground. And then with a clean damp brush, um, I just softened the edges out so it blended in more with the path. You can leave it hard edged if you like, if you like that look. Um, I just decided just to soften them off a little bit. Okay, so now the, the shadow colour that we put in the grass, and um, that should be nice and dry now. So I used a mix of hooker's green and yellow ochre, nice and watery. Um, and I went over, I didn't paint over the whole thing. I kind of scumbled it over and left areas of the underpainting showing through and, and the little bits of paper showing through, um, just to add more sort of texture to the grass. You know, if you don't like that look, you can literally glaze over the whole thing. It'll bring the whole thing together a little bit more. But seeing as this, this is just a quick sort of loose sketch, um, I decided just to leave it um, like that. You know, just kind of scumbled over. I, I sort of like the look of the, the rough grass effect that it gave. So, yeah, but you can, you know, apply as many glazes as you want to that. You've probably seen me do that in um, previous paintings where I've glazed over it several times. Uh, now I'm painting in the tree canopies with a mix of cobalt blue and cadmium red and I think a little a touch of burnt umber in there as well just to grey it off a little bit and again I'm using a dry brush technique um, and just dragging it over the, the surface of the paper so I get some of the texture showing through. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, so I'll let that dry. I peeled the masking tape off. Um, and I thought some of the trees had sort of lost the tone a little bit. You know, they've got sort of lost underneath the watercolour washes. So I decided just to use the HP pencil and just go over them again, just to define them a little bit more and just add a little bit more detail to them. Like I say, you know, it's not a finished painting that's going to hang on my wall or anything like that. It was just trying to um, capture an idea I had while I was out having a walk. Um, I'm quite pleased with it. It's okay for a, you know, half an hour sketch. Um, simple pencil and wash. I decided just to put a little fence in there as well, just to separate the, the path from the distant field there. there we go that's the finished sketch I hope that was helpful to you and um, thanks very much for viewing and I'll see you next time bye for now